Hello again, friends and family. Thank you so much for joining me again today on The Candid Homesteader. Today, I want to show you how to make your very own cold process bar soap right at home. Stay tuned. So some of you may be asking, what is cold process soap? Cold process soap is basically taking raw ingredients, mixing them, and turning them into soap without using any heat. Now there are also a couple other methods. There is a method called melt and pour. Um, it's basically a glycerin based soap block you can buy at any craft store and then you can add fragrance and color as you choose, but you are kind of limited in your creativity. That and it doesn't last very long, especially when it's exposed to the air. There's also another kind of soap you can make called hot process soap, where you are basically adding heat while you are adding the ingredients to cook the soap. So it does cut down um, on curing time, but again, that limits your creativity because you can't really um, mold it in the shape you want it to, you're limited on the colors and the fragrances you can put in it. So today I want to show you guys a very, very simple recipe you can make um, cold process soap. It's um, just two oils. You are going to need a few other items and ingredients, but we'll get to that here real soon. Okay, you guys, so for this soap making project, you are going to need quite a few supplies, which I have all right here. And again, this is going to be a very basic recipe. So um, these are actually not all the supplies I usually use for my soap making. This is just going to be a plain Jane gardener's bar of soap you can use to scrub up with um, when you get really dirty outside or you can actually use it on your shoes. Um, it's just going to be a nice hard cleansing bar of soap. So one of the first things you're going to need is a bowl. Um, and You can either use plastic or you can use stainless steel. Um, do not use anything wooden or aluminum because the sodium hydroxide or lye will actually eat away at that. Um, so this is the lye or sodium hydroxide. I get it from the Essentials Depot. Um, it's probably... Uh, one of these bottles is probably about maybe less than five bucks, but of course if you buy it in bulk like I do, it's much cheaper. The next thing you're going to need or want to invest in if you don't have one already is an electronic scale, um, preferably one that goes up to about 10 pounds and then you can measure it either in ounces or um, grams, kilograms, anything like that because every measurement is by weight it's not by volume when you're making soap so for this specific soap project we're only going to be using two oils I usually use between four and six oils in my soap again this is not a fancy recipe it's just a very basic simple recipe that anybody can really do at home I'll be using plain old olive oil you can get this at any supermarket and then coconut oil and as you can see, this coconut oil is actually pretty solid. This is 76 degree coconut oil. Um, once it gets above 76 degrees, it does melt into a liquid form. And I did get this from brambleberry.com. Um, again, buy this in bulk if you're thinking about making soap because it is so much cheaper than going um, to the grocery store and buying a jar of coconut oil. A jar of coconut oil that's about 16 ounces at the store will run you probably between 10 and 15 dollars. This was a seven pound bag. I've used a lot of it already for about 10 dollars. So that's it's a very stark difference between the price. And this is totally optional. If you want to make a plain unscented bar of soap, um, which I sometimes do just depending on what I'm making, um, you don't have to add any fragrance, but for this recipe I will be using eucalyptus. A lot of the times when I'm out in the garden and I'm working with, um, you know, dirt or neem oil, I get really stinky, so eucalyptus, eucalyptus is a wonderful fragrance to get rid of any really stinky smells. 
You're also going to need an immersion blender um, unless you want to hand stir your soap in for about six hours. Um, this one was really cheap. I think I picked this up at Walmart for about $8. Um, and I've had it for over two years now and it's still going strong. So definitely invest in one of these. You don't need a super fancy one. It's just plastic. As you can see, I've been, you know, making soap with it for a very long time. You're also going to need something to pour your soap into. So a soap mold. Got a little bit of leftover soap from my last batch I made there, so I'll have to wash that out. This I also got from Bram Brambleberry.com. It's just a plain rectangular soap mold. Um, you can pick them up at any craft store. You can get plastic ones um, with little shapes and designs. Um, but for this specific recipe that I've calculated, um, this is a 10-inch long um, three, a little over three inches wide and a little over two inches high uh, soap mold. So the soap will fit perfectly into there. So you're going to need something like this or at least um, something that will hold about 50 ounces of soap. As far as other materials, you're of course going to need some water. I always make my soap with purified water um, just to reduce any risk of contaminants uh, that may get into the soap and cause it to not come out right. And you're also going to need some personal protective equipment, um, some gloves. Again, lye is very caustic. You can get chemical burns even when you mix the lye in with the soap. Um, so you want to be super careful and then you want to either, um, invest in some safety goggles or glasses. I got these at Walmart years ago for like two bucks and they work just fine. You only have, uh, two eyes and you want to make sure that you're protected at all times. Okay, you guys. So the first step in making cold process soap is you're going to want to mix your lye water. So I have measured out my um, bottled water. Again, I use purified water for my soap, just in case there's any contaminants in my um, well water, because we do have well and septic around here. So the water by weight, I go by grams just because it's a little easier for me, but everything, again, is by weight. So I used my scale on the gram setting, and this is 344 grams of water. So it's about, let's see. Uh, 250 mils or so and then I did measure out again in weight my lie and be very careful again with this you guys you always make sure you're wearing gloves because this is very caustic this is once you mix it with water it essentially becomes acid and will eat through anything um, and you always want to make sure you add your lie to your water never add your water to your lie unless you want an acid volcano so again, I have measured the lye out. This was 137 grams. So what we're going to do is very slowly, I just have a, a you know silver spoon here of my silverware. We're just going to very slowly add this lye in. Just very slowly. And then once you start adding it in and mixing it up, you're going to notice that it's gonna get really hot. That's the chemical reaction happening. So this right here will get upwards of 200 degrees. So make sure you're, you are using it in um, uh, good quality glassware or good quality stainless steel, something that can handle that amount of temperature. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, but you, you can actually see it steam when you're mixing it. Let me see if I can show you guys. It, it is actually steaming. That's how hot it gets and that's the chemical reaction. So you're just gonna give this a little bit of a stir and over the course of 10 or 15 minutes, the cloudiness will all disappear and you'll be left with what looks like plain old water. So make sure you keep this out of the reach of any children or pets or maybe you know your significant other doesn't know you're making soap and they don't just pick it up and take a huge you know swig of it thinking it's just water all right so that's all good and mixed in i'm gonna throw the spoon right into my sink over here that's already filled with water 
to dilute any of the lye that's still left on the spoon. And we're gonna let this sit, um, just depending on how hot or cold your house is for probably about an hour or so until it cools down to room temperature. So while I'm waiting for my lye water to cool down to room temperature, I'm going to measure out my oils in weight. Again, always measure out in weight, not by volume. So for this recipe, we're going to be using equal parts of olive oil and coconut oil. So we're going to measure them out. And it's going to be right about 453 grams each of olive oil and coconut oil. So I'm going to add my coconut oil first and I just uh, pop this in the microwave um, for about two or three minutes. All right, so right about 453 grams. I'm gonna zero out my scale. Much easier to do that than to add it all up in your head. And another 453 grams. Perfect, right on the money. So we are actually going to be mixing our soap in this bowl. This is just a cheap bowl I got at, I think, the dollar store. Um, just big enough for one batch. I mean, it has a lot of room in there just so you can work around in it. Um, and we're going to let this sit out as well. Um, the coconut oil did, did reach about probably about 120, 130 degrees when I melted it. So we're going to let this sit out at room temperature. I do like to soak at room temperature just because it gives you a little more time to work with your soap if you're either, either adding um, colors or fragrances in them. Um, it just gives you a little more time to work with it before it comes to trace and I'll show you what trace looks like here in a little bit when we start blending in the soap. So now we are ready to mix in our soap. Make sure you have your oil all ready, your immersion blender ready, and your lye water ready. You also want to make sure that your oils and your lye water are within 15 degrees of each other. So what I have is a plain old kitchen thermometer, a uh, digital thermometer, and I made sure that they were in about 15 degrees of each other. Um, the oils were about 80 degrees and the lye water was about um, 89 degrees, so that is perfect. So you're going to get your lye water and slowly pour it down the shaft of your immersion blender and this just helps to reduce any air bubbles that may get in your soap. So once you're done pouring the lye water in, just give it a quick stir. Um, set your lye uh, water cup aside so it can be washed and you can already start to see the color changing in the oils. And you're going to want to tap your immersion blender just to get all the air bubbles out of the bottom. So to mix it, just do it in about 10 second bursts. Um, and each time you mix it, you can see the color get a little bit more lighter, a little bit more creamy, if you will. And this takes probably... Um, about two or three minutes just because this is going to be a harder bar of soap. Um, it has a lot of coconut oil in it so it doesn't take long at all to reach trace. And let me show you here what trace looks like. So as you can see on the right hand side of the screen that is what is called trace. It is when your lye and your oils start the process of saponification and you can see how when it's drizzled over the top, the soap kind of sits on top. And this is about a medium trace, which is perfect for this project. So once your soap has reached about a medium trace, if you are adding fragrance, go ahead and do it now. 
and just stir it in either with a whisk or with um, your immersion blender. You don't have to blend it in just to give it a good stir is just fine. You want to make sure it's well mixed in there. So now we are going to pour it into our mold and just gently pour it in. You don't want any splashing anywhere. Get all that soap out. Try not to waste any of it. Remember, do not get this on your skin because it will give you chemical burns even at this state. And the last thing you want to do is just gently tamp your mold down just to get any remaining air bubbles out. So this is the finished product thus far. We will leave it in the mold for about two or three days so it can harden up and we can unmold it. And then I will show you guys how to cut it into bars. Okay, you guys, so it's been about a little over 24 hours since we poured the soap into the mold. It did harden up a lot faster than I thought it was going to, um, which is not a bad thing. That means we just get to unmold it and cut it sooner. So if you're using a silicone mold like I am, what you want to do is take your mold and slowly peel the edges away. And you're going to release that airlock that's inside of there. And what I have right here is just a piece of wax paper so I don't make too much of a mess on my stove. And I flip my mold upside down and just gently press the bottom. And since this is such a hard bar of soap, it contains um, so much coconut oil, it should just slide out just like so. And here you have it. This is a log of soap, if you will. So depending on what size you want to cut these, this will make between 10 and 20 bars. I like to cut mine in about 1 inch bars, so it'll make 10. So to cut your soap, um, you can either use a regular non-serrated knife, that'll work perfectly. Um, what I use, because it's, it's a little bit easier for me and it was really cheap, is actually a cheese cutter. So, if you can see, it's just a little wooden cutting board, basically, and it has a lever with a wire string, and it makes a really nice, clean cut. And then on the measuring board itself, I measured out a half inch and an inch, so I know where to cut my soap. So, we'll go ahead and put our soap log right onto the cutting board. And if you have one of these, these are awesome. And look how nicely it just slices right down. And that's it, you guys. There you have it. That is your first bar of soap right there. Isn't that awesome? And it smells so good. Eucalyptus has a nice fresh scent, really clean scent. Now, I will say, you guys, before you use these, you want your bars of soap to cure in a cool dry place for about two weeks um, if not longer um, just because the longer they cure the better the soap will be the longer it will last you and um, the more gentler it'll be on your skin so these bars I'm not too concerned about cutting perfectly just because this is my garden bar soap this is the soap i'm gonna have uh keep outside to scrub up with with my garden hose or scrub my shoes after i take care of the chickens so i'm not worried uh too much about them being perfectly cut or anything oh that one kind of stuck oh it smells so good you guys and there you have it Thanks again for joining me today on The Candid Homesteader. If you liked this video or found it useful in any way, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and share with all your homesteading friends. From your Candid Homesteader, happy homesteading!